Hello everyone, welcome back to this new video. So in this series I want to start, I want to make a headless website within Braco and the Nuxt frontend. So in this series I will mostly be focusing on the backend of the headless website. Because a lot of us watching this video have probably already made a website within Braco. In order to follow this series you must have a basic understanding of Braco and a basic understanding of a frontend framework. I chose Nuxt because I have some personal experience with it but this should easily be replaceable right by uh, Angular or React or anything else. So why are we focusing on the backend? When working headless, the backend changes. Kind of gets a, um, a different role, right? It's only about serving content. Everything dynamic, for example, posting values, uh, having like a custom order system, whatever, is all done in a different backend. So in this series, I want to start with the CMS and then the frontend, and then later we can move to the backend. So in this video, we're going to go over the basic installation of Embraco, basic installation of Nuxt. And we're going to make uh, a home node in Embraco, and we're going to show it in Nuxt. So the first thing I want to do is we want, we want to follow the guide on the Embraco CMS documentation. So I'm just going to copy paste these commands. Some of these I might have already run, like this one. And we're going to install the Embraco templates. Uh, right now, that is version 13.3, but any Embraco version uh, higher than 10 should probably work right now because we are working with a mother in Braco. Now I'm going to create a new project. Instead of running this, I'm going to call this uh, headless, headless in Braco. It's going to build for us. So this created a new folder called headless in Braco, and in here there is a solution. So I'm going to open the CS project with Visual Studio and then I'm going to save the solution file. One thing I usually do is go to the properties, the lounge settings and delete IAS. This is not necessary, but I don't use it. And I find it distracting. So I'm gonna just going to rename this to run. And now the button should change to run. Now we can run the application. This is going to start up in Braco on the install page. I'm going to fill in my name. I'm going to fill my email. And I'm going to a password. For development, I usually like to do password one to exclamation mark. Then you should probably change the database to SQL Server Express Local DB for development. I'm going to call this Headless Umbraco. Then we log into Umbraco and we're not going to do the tour. I'm going to settings, create a new document type with a template and call it a home. I'm just going to add a new group and call uh, it title with a text string. Let's make it mandatory. And then we'll also do uh, Hello world. Next we're going to go to permissions and allow this route. Now we can create our home node and we'll just call it home. And I'll just say home page. Welcome Nuxt. Now I'm going to go to culture and host names and set this to be slash. Now this document is linked as slash. If you open it, nothing is rendering. That's because it's trying to render it with CSHTML right now. But we're not supporting that, are we? So we need to enable the Content Delivery API. And the Content Delivery API is very powerful. And what it will it do? It will transfer all our content over an API, of course, in JSON format. So how do we enable it? Well, we go to the settings in Braco CMS. Delivery API enabled is true. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to go to the app settings. And under CMS, we're going to say, I'm going to say Delivery API enabled. So now we can rebuild our solution. I'm just going to restart it with the button here. And let's look at the endpoint. So we can get a, a content item by ID, or we can get a content item by route. And for a headless website, we want to be using the route. Because the only thing we know of a content item is its route. So let's go to this endpoint. Opening the route with nothing will go to the home node, because the home node, well, it's set to the path with nothing. And then we can see the properties. So it says title and a hello world. We can see the content type, which is home. We can see the name of the document, which is home, created date, and everything. So now we've configured and started up in Braco. Let's move to the front end. So for the second part of this video, we're going to install Nuxt and get our content from the home node and render it. So for the installation of Nuxt, we can go to nuxt.com and uh, go to the Getting Started Guide. On the Installation tab, we'll see that we need uh, Node version 18. We have version 20, which is nice. Then we need a text editor, a Visual Studio Code. We're going to use that uh, also. And, I'm, and I've also installed the view extension. And we need the terminal, which I have. 
And the only thing we really need to do is open this um, init command with our project name and then follow some steps. So I'm going to paste this and I'm going to call it headless frontend. So I'm going to paste this on and I'm going to name it headless frontend. Now I'm going to use npm. So now we need to answer some questions. I'm going to say no on the Git repository. Next I'm going to open the project with Visual Studio Code. And let's trust the author. Then we're going to open an integrated terminal here. I'm going to run the development server. This will start up Nuxt on the 3000 port. And it says welcome to Nuxt. So let's start by showing and displaying the contents from this API. And let's first do the easy version. So we go to app.view and I'm going to clear it completely. So I'm only left with a script, script setup and a template. Now we're going to use Nuxt's data fetching feature for the first video just to show off what it can do. So we're going to use the use fetch and we're going to call the content delivery API. It's going to say const data pending error equals await use fetch. And then I'm going to go to Visual Studio, go to the launch settings and copy the local host URL uh, with HTTP and the port that's assigned for this launch setting. And we're doing that because we don't have HTTP support right now. That's for another time. Then I'm going to go to my browser where the delivery API is opened. I'm going to go to slash embraco slash delivery slash API slash v2 slash content slash item, which should get our home node. And what we can now do is we, we can render, uh, and let's do it in a pre. We'll say v if not pending, then we'll render data. Then what we first want to do is go into our program in our app and we'll say builder dot services dot add course and then we're gonna, gonna say options and we'll say options dot add default policy and then we're gonna say policy dot allow any origin and on localhost development you might run into course issues because um, course is a security measure that your browser put in and when the server says that it cannot be allowed from any origin then the browser will block your request now we need to use course so we'll say app dot use course because we've specified the default policy above, we don't need any parameters in here. So now we can restart the backend. Just to clarify, course is being used by the browser. And at this time, on this video, Nuxt is doing a server-side request to Umbraco. But in the future, we will be making client-side requests from the browser to Umbraco. And then we can check that it's still working, right? So we still have our home node. And now we go to our front-end application. And we can see that we also have the same JSON structure here. And because we're working with JavaScript or TypeScript, we don't need any typing at this moment. We will in the future, and I'll explain it when we get there. But right now, what we can do is we can go to Visual Studio Code. We can rem remove this uh, code again. And what I'll do first is we'll add a div with vif pending. And then we'll just add uh, a paragraph here that says loading for now. Then we'll say, well, if uh, VLs, which means that if it's not pending, so if the request is finished, then we'll render what's in our document. So we'll say data.properties, because that is the first nesting, and then we'll say dot .title. There it is, home page. We can do the same thing for data.properties dot hello world, our second property. And this will also be rendered to welcome next. Now if we change anything on the home node, so we'll call the home page exclamation mark welcome next, it's working. And we just save and publish, and then we refresh our page, it's working. So now we've created a basic next app which talks to Umbraco. But this is a very hard couple from the front end of Umbraco, because right now, if I would go into my settings, and I would change the home node, for example, I would make it uh, be named title with two E's. I would save and close. I would go to my next step, reload, and then it's, it's gone. And it's gone because this is hardly coupled to Umbraco right now. And when working headless, this line, of course, it needs to move to the right. Because Umbraco doesn't know about any front end. The front end, of course, knows about Umbraco, but Umbraco doesn't know about the front end because it's uh, one directional. Of course, that also means that our front end or our application is only channel because multiple front ends can connect to the same Umbraco instance. That's the power of headless, right? 
but we don't want our front end hardly coupled to the CMS itself because big changes or refactors in the CMS might cause troubles on the front end side. And this time it's just not showing it anymore, but there might be some bigger underlying issues like the application crashing, for example. So how can we resolve this? Well, we can decouple Umbraco. In the front end, we'll create a Umbraco client, which will uh, put its data in a model from the front end. And this will probably be a TypeScript type. And then the presentation layer can consume these models and not Umbraco directly. Because when um, so that when Umbraco doesn't feed certain data, the presentation doesn't crash or go away. It will probably be set with default values or components aren't shown. An example of this tree will be like home.view, which consumes home model dot typescript and then an umbraco client dot typescript, which is uh, responsible for the connection to your CMS. Putting the dependencies this way also makes sure that we can mock our front end and do front end tests. So for example, instead of having umbraco as your backing uh, data provider, we could also have a mock client which has a CMS with mock data. So we can do front-end tests and stuff like that. Decoupling your website is pretty important nowadays. And that's the headless way. So next time we'll focus on decoupling. That was it for today. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you again. Bye.